Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am the Desert Claw. And this week we get to learn about our favorite villain at the moment, Dragon. But before I get into that, like and subscribe, leave a comment down below and let's get this started. Also, yes, spoilers and all that stuff. So, uh, we actually get to learn about Dragon and where he came from. So, at the beginning of the chapter, you get this nice little uh, update. Since ancient times, mankind has pictured a great beast in the roiling thunderous skies in a land consumed by the cataclysm, a land called Iraq in earlier times and called Babylonia in long times before that. A lone boy appeared. So... What that means is, is Dragon, well, I can take it from what I've seen, is that Dragon appeared at the Cataclysm. So one of my theories about Dragon is he's not human. Um, this kind of says he is, but there are, there's some, there's some questions. So it says that uh, he walked on he walked away unscathed leaving only ashes in his wake the people who viewed this boy as a walking disaster now i find this very interesting so they say people so this is after the cataclysm happened and i uh, suspect anybody who was not an infernal was making for the tokyo empire at this point uh, just like when ogan's uh ancestor brought all those people over on cruise ships and stuff i imagine Tons of people were doing that, so I would I would imagine there'd be a mix of people, that that infernal infernalized people. But when he says he says he he was leaving only ashes, he was probably taking out infernals that were not a challenge to him. And so the next panel says there's four years he walked trampling before ever, everything before him. What little was left of the world was destroyed as he passed. What else could you call him but a disaster? So. He's basically like that tropey character that's super strong that's always looking for uh, the next fight to satisfy his urges. You know, you've, you've seen this character a million times in Shonen. Uh, not too surprising. Uh, but, you know, every fight he went through, he just was he was an unsatisfied person, which slowly but surely led to his d internal despair because he was despairing inside because he could never find a worthy opponent, basically. Uh, and every time he couldn't find a worthy opponent, his desires inside kept getting bigger and bigger. And uh, that was fueling the fire, so to say. Now, this is 200 years ago. And one of the most interesting thing about this is that uh, our favorite unknown character, Fairy, 200 years ago, approached Dragon, telling him that uh, disaster is no stranger to this world. Lightning split the heavens, Earth herself shaketh. In Eld, twas imagined a beast lay at the heart of these troubles. They called it Dragon. So, Fairy is basically naming him here. And uh, what I find really interesting is Fairy predicts or implants in Dragon's mind what will happen. He names himself, says he's Fairy, he says 200 years from now in an eastern realm, uh, Tokyo Empire, a great cataclysm will begin anew, and for that thy despair is needed. So, you know, it's like uh, Fairy is a top recruiter for the evangelists to find powerful beings. Um, so, questions I have about Dragon's origins, about not being fully human. I don't know how they handle life expectancy of, let's say, third generation pyrokinetics. We know tefro tefrosis, excuse me, is a thing where... If you use your powers too much, then your body starts to burn internally and you're, you're, you're not much for this world after. But Sumier and now Dragon and clearly Fairy are over two centuries old or longer. These people aren't human. And so one of my theories is that Dragon is special, so to say, like Shinra, about how he emerged in his world. Uh, and the same is with fairy because they're they're na they're named after literal mytho mythological creatures. So, to me, maybe they're the force of those mythologies manifested in the real world. I mean, how else can you ex you explain somebody living for over two hundred years? Sumier is the biggest what what the, what the fuck I guess you could say, but you know she's a disciple of the evangelist. She has she's been close with the evangelist. The evangelist. 
made it a priority to seduce her prior to the cataclysm, the first cataclysm happening. So she probably, maybe her life force is attached to the evangelist. Maybe the Sumier we see is the doppelganger of the real life Sumier. And clearly infernals, if you don't have a lifespan when you, uh, when they went to the Chinese peninsula and they saw the sea of infernals just chilling from the first cataclysm, um, maybe fairy and dragon are infernals with just extremely high will. I don't know, but, uh, fairy basically is recruiting dragon just for his despair. But then on the next panel, dragon's never been happier. Uh, he, he's just, he's just like a giddy child fighting Arthur, somebody who's actually giving him a challenge for the first time in his entire life. Um, and so, you, you know, he says like, this is the, my first actual fight. How about you make some thunder? Like he, when he says actual fight, like, it's, you know, he's been fighting peons for forever. And so him and Arthur start to battle it out like normal. And, you know, it's just so interesting to see this fight because clearly Arthur can walk on clouds now. I don't, he's not flying. He is somehow using the lightning in the clouds to gain footing here. So the clouds are, are keeping Arthur afloat per se. I don't, I, I guess he can fly using zoom because he can just cast zoom, but uh, they're still fighting in the heavens. You still see the, the grinning moon in the air uh, and then dragon blasts through Arthur and Arthur is able to block it and it just renders through the heavens and down to the Tokyo Empire and it looks like it nukes like several skyscrapers and uh and Vulcan's like what the heck is going on and then uh, Arthur just charges forth and you know gets dragon and he, he dragon's able to block it but he, clearly he's taking some damage here and then in this panel here you know Fire Force is like a DBZ fight at this point. You know how like in DBZ they're like in the middle of nowhere and they're fighting and they're just blowing up mountains and all kinds of stuff. That's what this is. All these like volcanoes that popped up out of nowhere and uh, they end up both in the water somehow and Arthur falls in and Dragon follows him and then Arthur with his new thunder powers is like mistake and he just electrocutes the crap out of Dragon and singes him. Uh, and, uh, doesn't do really do anything to him. And then dragon uses his powers to basically like split the sea in half. And the, it's like the, it's like the, the parting of the red sea between the two of them. And they're both just chilling on like coral rocks. <laughs> and dragon's like, it's awful cramped, Arthur. The world's not big enough for the both of us. Wouldn't you agree? And Arthur, uh, gives his uh, classic. Mph. And that's the end of the chapter. But, uh, uh, I, I, this, this answers some questions about dragon, but also brings more questions. You know, I don't even know if they're going to address the, the certain lifespans of certain members of the white clad, like Yona, for example, has been around for 200 years. Um, dragon fairy Sumier, uh, they have to be some sort of class of, in, of infernal from Adola or they're doppelgangers or something else, or they're a, a new breed of something we just don't know yet. So I hope that gets answered. Uh, it might not. It could be as easy as really powerful third generation pyrokinetics, like say Benny Mario will live for a very, very long time. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea, but apparently the next chapter that comes out, uh, it's already out now, the Raws are out, uh, waiting for translation, and then we have Golden Week after that, so we won't have a, we won't have a chapter to talk about, so I'll, I'll probably, uh, probably do a different video set where I'll talk about, uh, spring anime that I'm watching that I think are interesting so far, but, uh, yeah, so next week I hear it's just heavy, heavy fighting, so I might not have a ton to say about it, but we'll still talk about it, but, yeah, tell me what your theories on Dragon are uh, below, do you think... He's just a normal guy that was powerful. He's a third generation pyrokinetic. And because of that, his lifespan is just insane. I mean, the guy was floating through space. Just, <laughs> I don't know. It's, and I, I do realize that Adola has mixed at this point. So maybe that doesn't matter. But uh, something's going on with fairy, dragon, all these people that hasn't quite been explained yet. So tell me your theories down below. Uh, with that, that's all I got for this chapter this week. Um, 
If you liked the video, like the video for more content. Subscribe so we can come back every week and talk about it. And I hope you all have a good night. Peace.